Hello everyone, I read a bit of interesting cybersecurity news this week. From America, the US government warns of sanction risks for facilitating ransomware payments. Now, ransomware has definitely been on the increase during this period of the coup and the lockdowns. Having employees working at home has forced companies to open up their networks more than they would have probably anticipated and it's been a rushed thing to do and I suppose it got to the point that people can now work so it's all working okay, why bother going back and mitigating any risks of having such an open infrastructure? Well, looks like these things aren't being done and ransomware attacks are certainly on the increase. So the US Treasury Department's Office of Foreign Asset Control, the OFAC, today said that organisations that assist ransomware victims to make ransomware payments are facing sanctions and risks as their actions could violate OFAC regulations. And the OFAC may impose civil penalties on for sanction violations based on strict liability, meaning that a person subject to US jurisdiction may be held civilly liable even if it did not know or have reason to know it was engaging in a transaction with a person that is prohibited under sanction laws and regulations administered by the OFAC. So now you've got the point of not only have you got a ransomware attack, then you're going to have to find out if that attacker comes from a certain country that the US has imposed sanctions against. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like I can see that happening. So you might think that it would be worthwhile trying to keep it all quiet, but they do say further on in the article that by getting assistance from law enforcement means that any penalties will be reduced. Uh, I suppose the FBI's advice, so the FBI does not support paying a ransom in response to a ransomware attack. Paying a ransom doesn't guarantee you or your organisation will get any data back. It also encourages perpetrators to target more victims and offers incentive for others to get involved in this type of illegal activity. Yes, paying ransomware demands does mean you're funding crime. But I suppose needs must, if it's a company's data, it could be worth a lot more than the ransom demand. Well, that always leads me to think, why are these companies not backing up their data properly? Now, thinking back to the days of tape backups, <laughs> yeah, how long have we been around in computing now? But yeah, tape backups. The advice was to store them in a fireproof safe. Well, if the building burnt down, then you would at least get your backups. But I suppose tape backups aren't really such a thing these days, and we've got the data being stored on other servers, servers which are attached to the network. And whenever any attackers get in, the first thing they'll target is the backups. So that's improper control of backups. And then that leads us to the point then, no backups, data's been encrypted, what do you do? And it's not only a financial issue, we had the first death reported following a ransomware attack on a German hospital. This was earlier in September, it was only a couple of weeks ago. So German authorities are investigating the death of a patient following a ransomware attack on a hospital in Dusseldorf. The patient, identified only as a woman who needed urgent medical care, died after being rerouted to a hospital in the city of Verpetal, more than 30 kilometres away from her initial intended destination of Dusseldorf University Hospital. And the hospital was unable to receive her as it was in the midst of dealing with a ransomware attack that hit, hit its network and infected more than 30 internal servers. I've just been picking out articles from this past month, and we've had the situation of it being really a lockdown since March, and there's been a lot of ransomware attacks since then. So FinCEN, the US Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, they've warned of increased attacks targeting government entities, consisting of educational and healthcare institutions. There's mention here from Microsoft of ransomware is the fastest growing scam attempt. And even to the point that some ransomware attacks take less than 45 minutes. Well, well that is uh, brutal, the speed of them. All that for leaving a toehold open to the internet. A really poorly protected route into a company's network that just allows it to be taken over by an attacker 
the data held to ransom, destroyed, encrypted. This is another one from this week, like ransomware attack on Nevada school district. So serving over 320,000 students become victims to the largest ransomware attack against an educational institution since the coup began. This is the information from the US Department of Treasury. They talk a bit about the ransomware attacks and saying that ransomware attacks have become more focused, sophisticated, costly and numerous. It does always seem very anonymous where the ransomware comes from, but they do believe it is, but they do have reason to believe it's coming from certain countries. And it's not just large enterprises that are targeted, but also small and medium sized enterprises as well. So it's pretty much anyone, any company. I had to have a look at which countries the United States has sanctions against. Hmm, didn't know they were in there. But, oh, all, all of these, what have we got? Uh, Iran. <laughs> There's a bit of history with Iran, Israel. Hmm. Best not talk too much about that, although some of it is public domain. Israel boasts about what they do on Twitter as well, so you, know, there's, you, you can easily look up about certain things. But I think uh, probably what they're going for is that one there. And, oh, good old Russia as well, but I'm sure Russia is mostly a scapegoat. They do have quite a good cyber capability, though, so I wouldn't underestimate them. But I think the biggest one there is that. And why not? They've had such bad sanctions against them for years, and they've managed to develop their cyber attack capability. Now to go back to the article, so victims are encouraged to disclose attacks to avoid sanctions. So the OFAC reassures companies who get hit by ransomware attack that disclosing the incident to law enforcement and their collaboration during the investigation would be considered when evaluating future sanctions risks they may face after a ransomware payment. Ransomware payments benefit illicit actors and can undermine the national security and foreign policy objectives of the United States. For this reason, license applications involving ransomware payments demanded as a result of malicious cyber-enabled activities will be reviewed by OFAC on a case-by-case -case basis with presumption of denial. And would you believe it, a couple of those countries are listed out on that sanction list have appeared here in the article. So it's interesting to see these sanctions coming from the United States against companies who pay out against these ransomware demands. You know, it's kind of a double fine here. You got the you got the fine from the ransomware, and then potentially a fine from the government. That could end up costing quite a significant figure. It's probably well over and above what it would cost to get a computer network protected, get software patched, prevent any of the easy routes into the corporate network. But I suppose a lot of man but I suppose a lot of managers won't think about it and they won't care while everything is still working. Well thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.